Hey guys, what's up? It's Savannah. Welcome back to another episode of My Thoughts Exactly. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today. If you're new here, hi, my name is Savannah and I am your host of My Thoughts Exactly. Before we get started, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. That way you never miss an episode. We post weekly here on the podcast every single Friday. You are not going to want to miss it. So happy Friday, you guys. I hope you've been having a great week. And if you haven't, guess what? It's Friday. We made it. We did it. It is the weekend and I hope you're about to have a good one. I am very excited that it is Friday. This week has been a little bit discombobulated for me personally. We had Hayden's sister's graduation over the weekend, so we didn't end up getting back until Monday. So Monday felt like Sunday. Tuesday is feeling like Monday right now so on and so forth. So I'm very excited to have the weekend to just chill, relax. I'm watching my dad's dog again this weekend or my family's dog again this weekend. And I'm very excited because him and Church are the best of friends and it is so fun and cute to watch them play together all day. It makes me so happy to know that Church has like a little buddy. I always think that that's good. I like having him have just like a best friend. They do everything together. They go to the same daycare together. They do all of the things together. And so it's just really fun to be able to have them in the same house for an extended period of time. So I'm very excited about that. It's also supposed to be sunny here this weekend. Very stoked about that. So I am shaping up for a pretty good weekend, or I'm hoping it's going to shape up to be a pretty good weekend, and I hope you have one too. And I'm very excited to be here today. The first thing I want to point out, though, is if you're looking at this mic and you're watching me on YouTube and you're wondering, why does this mic look weird? It's because the mic is, it's just, it's doing its own thing right now. It's been kind of acting a little wonky for the past couple weeks, and I've just been kind of dealing with it. There's this part of it that's stuck and it won't come out, so it restricts me from being able to, like, have it properly sit in the mic stand. It's been the same way from Killer Instinct, too, but I'm just going to get a new mic all the way around because I think that that is also, it's just time. It's what we need to do. So if it looks a little weird today, I apologize, but the important thing is that it sounds good. So let's hope and cross our fingers that it sounds good. I keep checking over here to see my audio to make sure that we're still rolling and recording because it's just, it's very off-putting today. But that is not why we're here. Today we are here for another very exciting episode of What Would Sav Do? These are really my favorite, favorite things to do with you guys. It's my favorite segment that we, that we do here on My Thoughts Exactly. If you are unfamiliar and don't know what a What Would Sav Do? is it is typically where you guys write in your questions whatever's going on in your life things you need advice on help on whatever it is you write those messages into me on the my thoughts exactly instagram page which if you're not following already what are you doing it is just my thoughts exactly podcast on instagram it's really where I get every poll or question or segment. That's where I'm talking to you guys the most. So definitely go and follow that if you want to be a part of the next one and if you haven't been already. So that is where we are pulling from these or pulling these from today. And this is also the first one that we have done in May. Definitely the first one in May. And I like to do these once a month at least. So that's what we're doing and I'm very excited about it. So we are just going to jump right on into these today and get it going. Okay, first one. Bad anxiety tips after a night of drinking. What would Sav do? I have been there. I have been there so many times. I hate anxiety. I hate it more than anything in this world. Not true, but it's up there. I'm like probably the top five. I can't stand anxiety. That feeling of waking up, not knowing if you said the wrong thing, what you did, you're checking through your text, your call log. I've been there. I've done it. I do think that there is a certain level of anxiety where it's just a time heals all kind of thing. When I wake up and I have anxiety, I really have to just kind of accept the fact that this is how I'm going to feel throughout the day. However, there are a couple things that I will do to make myself feel better. The first one is when I wake up, I am taking an everything shower. I'm wiping off and washing off the night before. It is all coming down. It is all coming off. All of all of the bad decisions, all of the alcohol, all of the anxiety, the anxiety, all of it, it's all coming off in this everything shower, I swear to God. So I get in the shower and that is the first thing that I will do. And I'll typically take two showers on the days that I have anxiety, one in the morning and one at night. So I'll wake up, have my morning anxiety shower, and then I'll go downstairs. And again, I'll just kind of sit and I'll let the anxiety just kind of be there. 
and I'll accept it. And I'll text some of my friends. I'll see what they're feeling, how they're doing. And after that, the other thing that I like to do, and I think that it's really helpful, is I like to get outside in some, however you want to do it, whether that's going for a walk or my personal favorite is going for a drive. I just like driving around and being able to like roll the windows down, get some fresh air on my face, see that other people are still existing in life and like going around and doing their day-to-day activities and not worrying about my anxiety or what I did the night before. Because here's the thing, no one really cares, honestly. Like you are the only person that's gonna sit there and care about your anxiety or what you did the night before. No one is sitting there debriefing like we think that we are. It's all a mind game. And that's what I also remind myself during these times is like, I don't need to stress as much as I think that I do or as much as I currently am because it's really not worth it. No one is sitting there debriefing about what you did. We are our own biggest critics. We are our own worst enemies sometimes and we can get really into our heads about certain things. But what we need to remember is that it's really not that deep and it's really not that serious. Everyone has been there. Everyone has had a night where they wake up and they're like, oh shit, like what did I do? Or did I do anything? Did I say the wrong thing? Yada, 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 whatever it is. Or if you like wake up regretting a decision, everyone's been there, everyone's done it. And so I think it's important to remember that like we're all human, give yourself a little bit of grace and no one cares as much as we think that they do, truthfully. I know a lot of times we sit there and we amplify these situations in our heads because we're like, oh my God, like I, you know, what are they thinking or did, do they think that I did something weird or did they change their perception of me or did I say the wrong thing? No one cares. No one cares. And that's what we need to remind ourselves. And it's not in like a demeaning, like no one cares about you kind of way. It's just in like, no one's worried about it. Like no one is worried. And every single night that I've woken up or day that I've woken up and I've had that anxiety, that's what I get reminded of is no one cares as much as we think that they do. But the tips and tricks that I like to do, I like to take my morning and night shower. I like to get a little fresh air on my face, maybe get a workout in or a sauna. Those are really helpful. Um, I also will, you know, if you have like a face roller, like one of those ice ones, that's really great for just like deep puffing and waking you up or gua sha your face, do your skincare routine, whatever is going to help you feel more put together. That is what I recommend doing. And also just reminding yourself again, that it's not as deep as our minds will let us think it is sometimes. So hopefully those are some tips that you can take away into your next anxiety moment. All right, moving on. My friend cheated on their partner. They are married and my friend regrets it and is looking to me for support, but I'm out of things to tell them as I do not agree with their actions and they know this very well. Okay, Lots to unpack here. There are several follow-up questions that I have. Obviously, I won't get the answers to them right now, but I do have a couple questions because it does change the direction of my answer. Um, So my questions would be this. My first questions would be, is this a consistent thing? Is she consistently cheating on this partner? Is this an active conscious choice that she is making? And is this something that she, did you say that she regrets it? Yeah, yeah she regrets it or your friend regrets it. Sorry. Your friend regrets it and is looking to me for support. If there is regret there and if this was a one-time thing, this is where I would maybe give a little grace to the matter personally. It does not mean that you have to agree with what they did because I think that no one would agree with what they did and clearly they regret what they did as well. Because when I've been in these situations in the past, I get to a certain point where there really isn't much more for me to say because I also disagree with the choices and the actions that were being made. But at the end of the day, if this was a one-time thing, that's really the deciding factor for me. Like if this is a continuous affair, if this is something that has been going on for quite some time, if this is a decision that's getting made over and over again, that's where my answer shifts because I think that that is a much different conversation. But if it is a one-time thing and your friend deeply regrets it and your friend also knows that you don't agree with what they did, if you want to continue the friendship you know there's just got to be a way for you to kind of continue without having you don't have to agree with what they did you don't have to agree with what your friend did and you don't have to you know support what they did no one is sitting here you know advocating for their actions or feeling like yeah they did the right thing or they made the right decision or this was the right thing to do I don't think anyone would agree with that but I do think that at a certain point what I would say to your friend is if they are continuously looking for to you for support or words of encouragement or, you know, oh, like make me feel better about this. What I would say is, listen, 
I love you as a friend. I love you as a person. I just don't agree with the decision that you made. You know it. I know it. And I'm not going to try and sit here and make you feel worse about it because that's not what I'm here to do. But at the same time, there's only so many things and so many, so many words of encouragement that I can give you when it's all said and done. Because if they're constantly looking to you to make you make themselves feel better about the situation, that's where I would draw the line. I would say, I love and support you as a person and as a friend, but you cannot keep looking to me to try and justify your actions and justify what you did because I am not okay with it. And again, if it was a one-time thing, we can put it to bed and we can move on. But again, if this is a consistent action that you're seeing from your friend, maybe that is something that you wanna reconsider as is this the type of person that you wanna be around do your morals line up? Is this, are their actions, you know, aligning with what you believe in and what you stand in? I think that the main deciding factor, I know I keep repeating myself, but again, the main deciding factor for me would be, is this a one-time thing? Is this something that obviously she regrets? And is this something that's going to continue to happen and happen again? I would tell your friend, I'm here for you. I love you, but I don't want to keep talking about this because I just don't agree with it. And I can't sit here and justify what you did. I'm not the friend that's going to sit here and justify what you did, but we can move on and we can just try and get you past this. But the consistent conversations and the cycles and the circling back around over and over again about this, I'm not the friend to do that with. So I would just make that clear and I would set that boundary with her. And I think that that's okay. I think it's okay to do that. I don't think that you need to completely cut her off because of a mistake or a regret or a bad decision that she made. Um, but again, I think that if it becomes a pattern and then, then that is when I would, you know, take a second look at the friendship for sure. Okay, moving on. Is it wrong to be upset that my boyfriend didn't buy me flowers for a six month anniversary? Okay, yes and no. I think that, yeah, it's very normal. In, in my opinion, yes and no. I think it's very normal to be upset that your boyfriend didn't buy you flowers for your six month anniversary. Actually, there's even, I don't even think there's a no side to this. I don't know why I said yes or no. I think that that's, yeah, I would be upset. Did he get you anything else? Did he get you a card? Did he get you like, I don't know, a teddy bear or anything? Because if he didn't get you anything, then I would be a little bit upset. To me, there's a couple monumental anniversaries and it goes in threes. For me, it's three months, six months, nine months is like, eh, but three months, six months, and then one year. Those are the big ones for me. And then you celebrate the years after that. So one year, two year, three year, et cetera. So if he didn't get you anything, I would express that to him. I'd be like, listen, I get that it's probably silly to you or whatever, but you know, it was our six month anniversary and I was really excited about it. And you didn't really get me anything to kind of celebrate that with me. Did you guys go to dinner? Did you do something fun to celebrate at least? Because I think that if there was something that was in place of flowers, then you know, are you real? I mean, then I wouldn't get so hung up on the, he didn't get me flowers, but if he didn't do anything to celebrate with you, that is when I would kind of be a little bit more upset about it. And that's probably what I would vocalize. Like we didn't do anything to celebrate our six month. I was looking to you and I was hoping that you would be the one to kind of step in and take the lead on planning a celebration for us because it's six months is a big deal. And I would have just hoped that you would have done something to celebrate our relationship. That's what I would say. If he did do something or you guys did get dinner or he did get you a little gift or a present or whatever, then it's like, okay, or do the flowers, the, the flowers is like neither here nor there, in my opinion. But I'm not really a flower girl. If you were like a big diehard flower girl and that's what you like and that's what you want and he knows that, then yeah, maybe that would be a little bit more upsetting. But I think if there was something else in place of that, I don't think that it would be... I, I wouldn't get upset over it because there was like other there was like another thing or there was another celebration. Does that make sense? If there was absolutely nothing, that's when I would, you know, get a little iffy about it. But if there was something else instead of flowers, that's a, then I would be like, eh, OK, whatever. But if you're a big flower girl and he knows that, then, yeah, be upset. I think it's valid. I'm dealing with a selfish, clingy best friend that uses her past trauma as an excuse when I need space. What would Sav do? Okay, 
this is when I think it is so important to vocalize boundaries. And we've talked about this in the past couple episodes about boundaries in particular. I've talked to you guys about it. I opened up to you guys about it, about how I've been kind of implementing boundaries in my life when it comes to my friends, because sometimes I do feel a little bit suffocated and I do feel like I need space and it has nothing to do with my friends. It just has everything to do with I need the social battery recharge. I just need a little bit of space. And here's here's the thing. You do not need to justify or reason your need for space with anyone. You do not need to justify your boundaries with anyone. If you are just the type of person that needs a little bit of space, if you're the type of person that just needs a second, that's okay. It's very, very much okay. And I think that for someone to be weaponizing that against you and using their trauma to try and like make you sympathize with them, I think that that's a very toxic trait and it's not something that I would personally want to be around. Because it's your best friend, I would probably have a conversation and just say, hey, listen, this is, you know, these are my boundaries. It has nothing to do with you. There is just some times that I need a little bit of space and I don't appreciate when I get, you know, basically in maybe don't say this, but like trauma dumped on because I need a little bit of space just because I have boundaries. It doesn't mean that I don't love you as a friend or that I don't appreciate you or that I'm walking away from you or that I'm abandoning you. It just means that I need a little bit of space and that's okay because everyone does, you know, and maybe you guys can work out a system where when in those times when you need space, you just tell her like, Hey, I need a little bit of space right now. I just need a little bit of a recharge. I'll, you know, talk to you later. And maybe there's like a better line of communication that could be had. Maybe there is some sort of middle ground and compromise, but if someone is going to disrespect your boundaries consistently, because I would, I personally would say that, you know, throwing her trauma on you and using her past trauma to basically, you know, reel you back in and guilt trip you into not needing space. I would say that that's very, just, just disrespectful to your boundaries. And I think that if that continues to happen or if she continues, if she doesn't agree with, you know, what you're saying or doesn't agree with your boundaries or if if it's a pattern, if this continues to happen after you've communicated that, then that is when I would probably take a really big step back. But I'm a big, big, big advocate for communication in all senses of the word when it comes to friendships, relationships. Like if you need something, whether that be space, whether that be more communication, less communication, whatever it is, you can't, Um, I don't think that you can really, people can't read our minds, you know, as much as we would like them to. And I can't expect a certain, you know, attribute or quality, or I can't expect something out of someone without me vocalizing it. So I always think, and I'm a big advocate for this. My therapist taught me this years ago. I, if I just say it once to you, once is enough. If I just communicate how I'm feeling and you know that this is where I stand, it does. your reaction does not matter. Like their reaction does not matter. If you communicate how you're feeling and you communicate what your boundary is, it doesn't matter what their reaction is because you are communicating that. If they're upset with it, they're upset with it. Like that's your boundary. You're clear with it. You're sticking to it. And that's that. And if they get upset, then maybe that's not someone that you necessarily want to involve yourself with or be around as consistently as you are. And I think that that's okay. In fact, I think it would be even more toxic to feed in to this negative and toxic behavior. I think it would just be, you know, almost, um, what's the word? I think it would be feeding into it rather than putting a halt in a stop to it right then and there. But again, I do think that you need to communicate that because without communicating it, it just, it, the lines get blurred. And I think it's important to have a very black and white conversation about, listen, look, I love you, love you as a friend, but sometimes this is what I need. And these are my boundaries because of that. I want to be there for you, but I just do not appreciate you you know, using your trauma to try and guilt me sometimes is how it feels into not respecting my own boundaries. That's not a healthy friendship and it's not a friendship I want to be involved in. That is what I would say. I think that we need to learn and just start advocating for ourselves more because again, we get so used to and just so wrapped into bending our boundaries for other people, but that's what the boundaries are there for. Like the boundaries are there to be boundaries and it's okay to have them. And as we get older, I think we start to realize that more. And so I just think that it's important to communicate communicate what your boundaries are and that way they are aware of the expectation as well and you guys can continue on with your friendship from there.
That's what I would do. That felt like a really long answer. So I apologize if it was. Okay, moving on. What would Sav do if you were meeting the guy you're talking to and you feel anxious because you are so shy? Okay, I've definitely been there. I think that anyone, I think most people feel this way. I think when you're meeting the friends and family of your significant other, there is a definite level of nerves that are going to be there. And I think it's so normal and I think it's natural. And if anything, I think that it's a good thing because it shows that you are excited about the person you're talking to. You like them. You want, you know, other people to like you as well. Other people that are in their circle. But what I would really tell you is to put all the nerves to the side. Like, I don't think that it's like... I get where the nerves are coming from, but I also think that it's important to just remember that you are there for a reason. Obviously, the person that you're talking to likes you and they see a potential future with you. They want you to meet their family and their friends and meet the people that are closest to them. And that's a big compliment. So obviously, it's not for nothing. And I wouldn't worry about, oh my God, are they going to like me? I hope they like me, da 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 because that's just going to overcompensate your entire mental when you're in the moment being there and it's going to remove you from actually being present. So I would just try and put that to the side and really just focus on being yourself. Obviously, like I said, there's a reason that you're sitting there and really just tap in to that reason. I think that it's very normal to be nervous. I think it's very normal to feel anxious. I was also someone who was very shy and meeting people's friends and family. I definitely had that feeling of like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't really want to talk. I don't really want to say anything. I hope they like me. Maybe if saying nothing is better than saying anything at all. I don't know. And I would get really wrapped up in my own head. But I realized after meeting several friends and family of the guys that I've dated, I always end up having a better time when I just am letting loose a little bit. Like when I just let the guard down, when I'm not feeling so uptight, I think again, it's very normal to be uptight and very normal to have these nerves, but let the guard down just a little bit. I think that that's the best way you're going to be able to connect to these people that are very close to the person that you're talking to. It's going to be the best way for them to see your personality a little bit. It's going to be the best way for them to get you get to know you a little bit more. And it's a very exciting thing. I think that you should walk into it with a like a sense of confidence being like I'm confident in myself I'm confident in what me and this person have and where we're going in the future of what we have and I think that those are all very positive things. And so I would focus on the positive of everything rather than, you know, being all super uptight about it or anxious because you're shy. I think that that, you know, is as to be expected, but don't let it get in the way of really letting your personality and your true self shine because you're amazing and you're there for a reason. And I, you know, I definitely think that that's what's the important thing to focus on. So I get it but you're going to be great. And if anything, have a glass of wine before you go. You'll feel a lot better. Alrighty, let's keep going. (laughs) I have casual sex with my manager for three months, but I'm getting attached. What do I do? You stop. That is what you do. That is what we're doing right now. We are stopping. We're not continuing this any longer. This gets so messy so fast because there's only a couple options as to what is going to happen here in these situations for what is bound to happen in these situations. And one of them is that someone gets attached. Either someone gets attached, someone gets their feelings hurt, you know, the manager employee relationship gets all screwed up. I would stop it before it goes any longer because really what are your other options? You're going to keep doing this and you're going to keep growing feelings and then it's going to get even worse. I would not do that. I would stop it right now. And there are so many other people that you could go and go on dates with or hook up with or have fun with or whatever. It does not need to be your manager. And I get there might be like some, you know, power play thing that's like intriguing because it's like not something that you're supposed to be doing and it's like secretive and it's fun but stop it it just it needs to stop and it needs there needs to be an end to it because there's nothing good that will come out of it again I get it's intriguing it's spicy it's fun you can go have spicy and fun with someone else who's not your manager where it's not going to get messy and I think that over time if you do choose to continue this it's only going to get worse because clearly you've already started having this attachment and that's not just going to go away. So if I were you, I would shift gears. I would just put a stop to it and I would start dating other people or I would, you know, find someone else or I would just focus on yourself because I don't think that continuing on with this is going to be healthy for you in any way. And that's what I would do. That's what I would do. I would just stop. 
that's what I would do. All right, moving on. How do you find friends with similar morals? I'm lonely as a 21 year old and not being able to find friends who are genuine. Okay, I definitely understand this. I feel like I've been there a lot. And I feel like the best thing that I have done in this situation is I have turned to Bumble BFF. And I think that I know a lot of people have different opinions on this because a lot of people think it's either, you know, it's weird. They don't want to do it. They're like, eh, I don't know if this is going to work for me. And who knows? And this is, am I putting myself out there? It's weird. It's like a dating app, but it's friends. I don't get it. I think that Bumble BFF is a great way to find friends or really any other social media outlet. Like I know Facebook, if you go into Facebook and go look in like your town, wherever you are, like I'm sure there's a Nashville girls group. In fact, I know that there is. So if you are in a town that has you know, people that have one of those groups, I would join one of those groups and I would put out a little post and be like, hey, this is me. This is what I'm about. This is what I like to do. If anyone has these you know, similar interests, hit me up, let's hang out, let's, you know, go get coffee, go for a walk, whatever it is, I would do that. Or again, Bumble BFF, creating a profile, putting your interests in it, putting what you're about in it, and really being able to weed people out that way. Because I think that making friends is very hard as an adult and making friends with the right morals or not the right morals, but the morals that align with yours is also even harder. So in order to do that in an efficient and effective way, I would put myself out there on those social media sites. That way you can kind of reach people that maybe you wouldn't normally reach or maybe you wouldn't normally find and you'll be able to connect through there. I think that that's a very effective way to do that. And I've seen it work a lot. I've had it work a lot with Bumble BFF. I would say that the majority of my friends here, I'm trying to think, yeah, I would say about half of my friends in Nashville I have through Bumble BFF and it, it's a great thing and I've made really great close friendships with a lot of amazing girls and women on it. I think it's amazing. So I think Bumble BFF or like a Facebook dating group, that would be my advice for you because that way you would really be able to kind of again weed out the friends that maybe don't align with what you're looking for and maybe, you know, it's just not the right fit, but you'll be able to find the ones that are. Okay, next one. How to deal with leveling up, but at the same time, hating change. Love you, Sav. Love you too. Here's the thing when it comes to change, because you are talking to someone who hates it. I hate change, and I always have, and I probably always will. But here is my opinion when it comes to change and evolving and all of the things. I personally, and I've always felt this, I think that when it comes to something like this, your desire to evolve needs to overpower your fear of change. So what I mean by that is I truthfully believe because I've lived through this so many times and have experienced it in so many different ways, I think that when you are afraid of change, you will reach a point where your fear of change does not matter anymore because you are going to realize that whatever it is that you want to evolve in, whether it's relationship, career, friendship, personal, all of the things, the desire to evolve is going to overpower that. You're going to reach a breaking point, and I always say this, and I refer to this specifically with relationships. I always think that when you are in a toxic relationship or you're in like a toxic cycle with someone, you're going to ride it out until you can't anymore, and the reason I believe this is because I have lived through this so many times. A lot of my friends have lived through this so many times. I can tell someone you know, all the relationship advice that they want to hear. I can give them all the books, all of the things, right? All of the tools but if they are not ready to end it it will not matter and that also plays into career if you're not ready to change it does not matter and I think that what we need to really start focusing on is the after like when you look when you look at before and after like this is right now in your before you are in the before what is it that you want to evolve is it you know something in your personal life is it a career change you want to have do you want to move to a different city is it your friend group is it something to do with dating whatever that after looks like Envision that. Envision what that after looks like and decide right now to yourself, is the after better than where you're at right now? Is that what you want for your life? Is it more appealing? Is it more intriguing? Does it make you happy? Does it make you excited? And if that's the case, then 
the fear of change should really go out the window because what are, what are we afraid of? What are you afraid of losing or gaining in this evolution of yourself? Like when you are evolving, because at the end of the day, you being at your very best and like evolving in any way that you want to, that's what matters. Like the fear of change, that should go out the window because at the end of the day, you're gonna have to get through that. You're going to have to just kind of dive in head first and realize that what you want is going to require change because if it, if it didn't you'd be it, you would be it right now like this is where you would be at right now but clearly you want more for yourself you want more for your life for your own mental state whatever it is you want more and as you should i think that it's an amazing thing that we get to have in life is like wanting more for ourselves choosing that we want to do better for ourselves in whatever facet that may be and with that, that sometimes requires a little bit of change. Nothing that's worth having comes easy. And that's such a cliche, but there's a reason that it's cliche. Nothing worth having is going to come easy. It's going to require a little bit of change. But again, I think that you're going to get to a point where your fear of change is going to go out the window because you realize that you don't want to be living the way that you're living anymore. Or there's something about, you know, what whatever it is that you're wanting to evolve, you're going to get fed up with how it is currently. And that's going to kind of ignite this spark in you that is really going to, you know, start this, uh, this evolution and this evolving and the change. I think that it's normal to have a fear of change. I think that a lot of people do. And I think that that's what holds us back a lot of times from so many amazing things. And it's held me back so many times in the past. I remember when it comes to even moving to Nashville, you know, that was something that I was really I wanted to do for so long. It was something that it was always in the back of my head. I wanted to move to Nashville and it was, you know, 2020, I ended my relationship and then 2021, I was like, oh, maybe I'll stick around. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do that. And then I finally reached a point where I was like, I cannot be here any longer. I was like, there is no more growth here. And that was a really, really big realization for me to come to because when you realize that there is no growth in where you currently are, that's a scary thing because we're all so young and we have so much life ahead of us that if we're not growing, like if we're not growing and evolving, then what are we doing? And that is what really ignited me to move to Nashville. That was what the kickstart was of me being like, I can't keep doing this anymore. I can't keep living the same life. I can't keep, you know, my mental state was horrible. I was dating the same types of guys. I didn't have any great friends in uh, in California and I needed a change. And that is where I was like, I don't even care that I'm afraid. I don't care that I'm moving to Nashville and I don't have any friends. I don't care that I'm moving to Nashville and I've never lived by myself before ever and now I'm doing it out of state. Like I realize that that's where the growth is going to come into play and picture yourself where you want to be and you are going to be so much happier once you get there and you're going to be so proud of yourself knowing that you did it you know you got over your fear of change you got through all of this pent up anxiety that you had about what the future could hold. It's a great thing that you're wanting to evolve your life. It's such a great and positive thing that you're wanting more for your future. And I think you just have to remind yourself that your fear of change should not come in the way of that. Your desire to change your life is what you should focus on. And that is what I think is really, really important. So that's what I would say when it comes to that. I always think just go for it. Okay, we've got a long one here. I'm going to try and read this. I can't really even see it, but I'm going to try and read it. I need my glasses. Did I tell you guys I got glasses? I think I did. I'm not going to repeat that story, but here we go. I went out to a bar and then a club with my friend for my birthday. It was just the two of us, and she had asked days before if she could invite a girl we both know along, but they are much closer. I had said no because I'm usually a third wheel when I'm with them, and I wanted to have a good time. The, my friend agreed and said that the my friend agreed and said that the girl would be at the club with her friends, so we may see her, which was fine, but to not invite her along with us. The night of, my friend told me that the girl's friends weren't going out, so she wouldn't be at the club. It didn't faze me one bit because I didn't want to see her. My friend proceeds to call this girl to join us out at the bar. Quote, unquote, just the bar. <laughs> 
So I brushed it off since it would only be an hour or two. Once the girl joined us, my friend insisted on her joining for the rest of the night. She did. I was left out of conversations, dancing at the club with them. I just felt like I was tagging along rather than celebrating my birthday. At the end of the night, I called a cab and when asked what was wrong, I explained that I felt like I was interrupting their hangout and was headed home. My friend didn't talk to me for three days and explained that she didn't want the drama because she didn't see anything wrong because her friend and the girl or sorry her and the girl hadn't seen each other in a long time which was why they were chatting so much i'm not sure how to move forward and i don't feel like i was being dramatic but maybe i'm in the wrong what would sav do you're not in the wrong <laughs> you're not in the wrong at all I would feel the exact same way. I have always been in situations in the past, not always, but I've frequently been in situations in the past where you're with two people and they are either closer or they're chatting, like not even too much, but they're, you know, clearly excluding you from the conversation, whether that's intentional or unintentional. It's just very much feels like you are third wheeling on a friend date. And that is the worst feeling, especially on your birthday. I think that it was very entitled and self-centered of your friend to think that this is something that you would be okay with, especially after you explicitly told her that this was not what you wanted. I think that it's your birth of all days. Like if this was like a random night and you guys went out and this is what kind of transpired and it just so happened that she tagged along, it would still be annoying. But the fact that it's your birthday is very very, very out of touch, in my opinion, on her end. The fact that she's so okay with it and then is trying to justify what had happened by saying that her and this girl hadn't seen each other in a long time, which was why they were chatting so much. Why did she even need to come to begin with if they hadn't seen each other in a long time? Why did why was this the place where your friend felt like this was appropriate? If they want to go get dinner on their own time, if they want to go get coffee and catch up and chit chat on their own time, that's great. But this is your birthday and this is what you wanted to do. I'm a big, big birthday girl. I know some people are not b birthday people and they're like, it doesn't matter to me what I do. I don't care. I, I'm very nonchalant about it, whatever. That's great. But I think that if you are a birthday person, which clearly I would say that you are because you had a plan for your birthday. You had something that you wanted to do on your birthday. And I think that that's amazing. Being a birthday person or really just any person in general who has a birthday and then for you to be like, you know, you as in your friend to come in and try and be sneaky with these plans and twist things in a way that she knew would ultimately work in her favor. I think that she knew very good and well that if she invited her friend to the bar, it would eventually roll over into going to the club. And I think that that was a very manipulative tactic, especially on a day that's supposed to be about celebrating you. You chose this friend that you wanted to be with because you wanted to celebrate your birthday and ring it in with her. And then in Instead, she invited a friend knowing that it's not what you wanted and you had explicitly communicated it to her. Again, this is what I'm saying about the communication thing. Had it been something where you just said, oh, I don't know or whatever. And no, 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 no. The fact that you explicitly communicated it to her, it puts you 100% in the right, in my opinion, because I think that you told her what you wanted for the night. It's your birthday. You just wanted to spend it with your friend and have a good time. Go out, get drinks, go to the club, do your thing. For her to twist it and manipulate it in a way that, you know, left her, that worked in her favor, that I think is very manipulative. I think that you're 100% in the right. And if I were you, I would distance from this friend. I would not reach out. I would not say anything. And when she does come around, because she will, I would, I would double down. I would say, listen, I told you specifically that this is what I wanted to do on the night of my birthday. I wanted to be with you. I chose you to be with on my birthday. I wanted to celebrate it with you. I wanted to ring it in with you. I wanted us to have a good time together. And that is what I told you I wanted to do. I communicated that to you very clearly. I also communicated to you that I did not want to be in a situation where I felt like I was a third wheel on my birthday between you and another girl. And because of that, you then twisted things in a way where it ultimately ended up being exactly what I said that I didn't want and you still don't seem to 
care. I think it would be one thing if the friend joined, you know, which I still don't agree with, but if the friend did join and your friend was actively still trying to like celebrate you, it's your birthday, it's your night, what do you want to do? Including you, making you feel like you're part of the conversation, making you feel like, you know, this is, there's still a reason, the reason that you guys are celebrating is you. But to continue the behavior of just being clicky and almost like mean girl ask, I don't like it. And I would, I would vocalize that too. Again, I would wait for her to come to you. I guess it also depends on how close you guys are, but clearly you guys are close. If you chose this girl to hang out with you on your birthday, like that to me says that you guys are very close and I would wait for her to come to you. And then I would just lay it out there. I'd be like, listen, I still don't agree with what you did. I still think that it was very, you know, manipulative. And I think that it was a kind of a slap in the face to me on my birthday after telling you that this is not what I wanted. I told you the one thing that I didn't want to do is feel like I was a third wheel to have this girl join along that like I'm not really cool with. And here we are doing exactly that. And when I vocalized it to you, you made it seem like I was being dramatic and I was in the wrong and you know, oh, you guys, you guys haven't caught up in so long. Why is them not catching up in so long have anything to do with you? Why is that your problem? Why is that your issue? It's not. And so I would, again, vocalize that to her when she comes to you because she will she definitely will but double down I think it's important to stand up for yourself I think it's important to you know you don't have to be confrontational or or aggressive about it I think it could be very very cut and dry because I think that this is very cut and dry it's not this is not like one of those things where oh I see your point and oh I I think that I personally me as Savannah in the what would Sav do thinks that this was fucked up I think that that's a fucked up situation and I think it's a screwed up situation for your friend to put you in and it would make me question if this is a true friend of mine because no real friend of mine should ever put me in a situation that I explicitly told them I didn't want to be in, especially on my birthday. I would be pissed, livid, so annoyed, but that's what I would do. And that's going to be the end of it, you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of My Thoughts Exactly and another segment of What Would Sav Do? If you're new here, like I said, make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. That way you never miss an episode. We post weekly on the podcast every single Friday. You're not going to want to miss it. I hope you all have a great weekend. I will catch you back here next week with a brand new episode and I will see you there. Bye, guys. (laughs) 